Hello everyone. Today I'm going to demonstrate how to set up an IRETN40R as a high speed counter. I have an IRETN40R here, wired to a signal generator. The signal generator is connected to inputs 10 and the S1 pin on terminal block 1. We'll configure the high speed counter functionality using Easy Remote I.O which is the configuration software used for Wintex IR Series Remote I.O. Therefore, if you'd like to follow along, please download and install Easy Remote I.O. To use Easy Remote I.O., select the Automatic Scan button on the top toolbar. Then, in the following menu, click Scan once more to find the device. Since my computer is connected to the IR etn 40 r via Ethernet, Easy Remote I.O. can find my device. In some cases, Easy Remote I.O. may find your device, but the IP address will be shown in red. This indicates that the IP address of the module is not on the same subnet as your computer, which may occur when you first start using the retn 40 r as the default IP address is 192.168.0.212. In this scenario, you will need to modify the IRETN40R's network settings using the Modify button before you can add this unit to your project. When found, and as long as the network settings are valid, click OK to add this unit, and you will see it appear in the Project window on the left side. As a brief overview of the tabs within Easy Remote I.O., the I.O. Modules tab allows you to read the current value of inputs and outputs while monitoring your device. The Parameter tab is where we adjust parameters, and the log below is where you can read the current status of your I.O. These two tabs and the dialog below are undoubtedly what you'll refer to and use the most when working with Easy Remote I.O. To connect to the IRETN 40 r I'll click the Start Monitoring button at the top center. You'll see the coupler's name turn green on the left side, indicating that we're connected to the device. In the Parameter tab, if we scroll down, we can see certain values pulled from the iretn 40 r Some of these values may not match the project values, but that's okay. To use the iretn 40 r as a high-speed counter, we'll modify some of these parameters. In this demonstration, we'll use the Simple Counter 0 to read pulse input from our signal generator. In the Parameter tab, next to Terminal 1 High Speed Input Function, I'll select Simple Counter 0 slash 1 from the drop-down list. We'll also need to configure the Simple Counter 0 upper limit. The current value is equivalent to the upper limit of a 32-bit unsigned number. So we can leave this value as is during this demonstration. With that finished, let's download these parameters to our device. Next, let's check the simple counter zero command value. The default value is keep counting, which we'll leave during this demonstration. Now, let's take a look at the simple counter zero value. Right now, the value is zero because our signal generator is turned off. But if I switch on the signal generator, you'll see the counter value starts to increase. I'll change the input frequency to 10 Hz, and you'll notice that the counter value increases a bit faster. Let's use rate calculation to determine the actual input frequency. I'll set the time windows parameter to 1000 milliseconds, and the windows channel to simple counter zero, and download this change to our device. After a brief moment, the rate value now reflects the actual input frequency from our signal generator. I'd like to note that the time windows parameter is a scaling factor used in rate calculation, such that the input frequency is equivalent to the rate value divided by the time windows parameter in seconds. Towards the center of our screen, you'll see a column labeled Modbus Mapping. If we double click on one of these addresses, we can see the address mapping values. Different devices may use either a 1 based or 0 based decimal address, depending on the Modbus client requirements. 
Let's use Easy Builder Pro, WinText HMI software, to read some of these parameters. I'll create a new project for a CMT3072XP. In the system parameters, I'll select the New Device Slash Server button and add our Modbus TCP IP driver. Once added, I'll use the Settings button and ensure that the IP address of the Modbus TCP IP driver matches the IP address of the IRETN40R. Next, I'll add a numeric object to the display and configure the address to read the Terminal 1 high speed input function. The one based decimal address is 4045. And, since the read function code is 3 and the write code is 6, this parameter can be read from or written to using the 6x address type, according to the PLC connection guide for our Modbus TCP IP driver. After placing this object, I'll select the project tab and run an online simulation. Within the simulation, you'll see the value displayed as 1, which corresponds to the simple counter 0 slash 1 setting we selected earlier. I'll add the simple counter zero value using the address 6x4001. In this case, I'll change the data format of this object to 32-bit unsigned in order to accommodate larger values and to match the data type of this parameter. Then, I'll run the simulation again so that we can view the counter value in real time. Finally, I'll add a few additional parameters to our display and test the project. This test project includes all the parameters needed to configure the Terminal 1 simple counter 0, including the Terminal 1 high speed input function, simple counter 0 command value, simple counter 0 upper limit, and simple counter 0 value. Now, of course this is just an example using Easy Remote I.O. and Easy Builder Pro. The IRETN40R is a Modbus TCP IP server and an Ethernet IP server, so it is compatible with other third-party Modbus TCP IP clients. We'll cover more advanced setups, like when using the IRETN40R with the Compact Logix, in a future tutorial. If you found this tutorial helpful and would like to see more, head on over to our channel to check out the latest technical tutorials. Feel free to check out our forum as well for free demo projects, user manuals, and more. Thank you for watching.